You're watching HCC News with Johnny Harvey, Sonye Norris, and Nick Wall with sports. Hello and welcome to the, another edition of ACC News. I am Elise Barlow, filling in for Sonye Norris. And I'm Johnny Harvey. Here's, what, here's what's been happening around Hutch this week. September 11, 2001, the world held its breath as terrorists attacked the World Trade Center in New York, killing nearly 3,000 citizens and emergency personnel. This season's first dental lecture series guest, Fire Battalion Chief Richard Picciotto, experienced the terror firsthand. This past Monday, the Dillon Lecture Series at Hutchinson Community College featured New York Fire Battalion Chief Richard Picciotto, who was the highest ranking fireman to survive the 9-11 attacks. Picciotto spoke at a press conference and later to a large crowd of students, community members, and emergency personnel about his experiences. I was in the North Tower when the South Tower collapsed. I was on the 35th floor of the North Tower. And when I heard it, I, I, I knew something catastrophic had just taken place, but I didn't know exactly what. I actually thought something happened in the North Tower. Uh, after a short minute or so, I got confirmation that the South Tower collapsed. And at that point, I knew that there had to be hundreds of firemen, a thousand people at least, and a lot of friends of mine had, had just perished. Chief Picciotto himself was trapped for four hours in the rubble after the North Tower collapsed. Uh, I know what's happening. I know this building's coming down. I know it's going to be over in a matter of seconds. So I wanted so bad. I prayed for what I wanted so bad. And what I wanted is, I didn't want to suffer. I did not want to suffer. So I was praying, please God make it quick. Please God make it quick. I don't know if the words were coming out of my mouth, but they were in my head. Please God make it quick. Please God make it quick. I am shaking so loud. Please God make it quick. Please. His experiences led him to write a New York Times best-selling book, Last Man Down. I couldn't work for a couple of months after because of my injuries. And I couldn't just stay home doing nothing. I had to, I had to write an extensive fire report. I couldn't sleep. So I was writing my, for my fire report. And I was going to firehouses and telling them my story. And it was bringing the only thing that was bringing pleasure to some of the firemen. So they kept on encouraging me, keep on talking, keep on talking, you should write a book, you should write a book. And after doing this for a couple months, I had pages and pages and pages of notes. And for my fire report, I had pages and pages and pages and pages of what went on. And then after being uh, encouraged to write a book, I said, well, I already have a book written there, now I just have to rearrange it. Picciotto said one important lesson to take away from the experience is the importance of priorities. Now I can't tell you what your priorities should be. What I can tell you is you probably become very focused anytime there's a tragedy in your life. If there's a tragedy, a personal tragedy, a family tragedy, a state, city, national tragedy, like September 11th, but anytime there's a tragedy, you get very focused on what's important. And what do you get focused on? Family and friends. You don't get focused on your next vacation, new car, new pair of shoes. Nothing wrong with having any of that stuff. That's all great to have. But what's really important is your family and your friends. Thank you. God bless you. For HCC News, I'm Lori Moody. Also, this past Monday, the century-old Time Castle placed in the cornerstone of M Memorial Hall was opened. The capsule was sealed in what was then named Convention Hall in 1911. A in a ceremony presided over by the President William Howard Taft, contents the capsule included a Bible, Hutchinson newspaper, business cards, postcards, a letter, coins, flags, and more. The time capsule contents will go on public display in April at the Reno County Museum. Also, in April, a new time capsule will be placed in the cornerstone to be open in another 100 years. 
Former Senator Bob Dole will be in Hutchinson Saturday for the dedication of the Bob Dole Bypass, nearly seven years after the official after officials named the stretch of highway in the city's west side in his honor. The public will have an opportunity to visit with Dole and his wife, former Senator Elizabeth Dole, during the event set for 3 to 4.30 p.m. at the Kansas Caucasus Fair in Space Center, right adjacent to the HCC campus. Reserve parking will be available in the parking lot on the south side of 11th Avenue. A Hutchinson man was flown by a lifetime helicopter to St. Francis Hospital in Wichita Tuesday night after injuries he sustained in a motorcycle accident that evening. Brandon Welch was eastbound on 4th Avenue when he, hit, when he hit some sand and lost control of his bike near Mohawk Road. Sliding off the roadway and striking a pole, Welch was thrown down an embankment of a pond near southeast corner of intersection. After receiving treatment for the, his injuries, Wichita, he was released. Welch was not wearing a helmet. Close to 70 bales of hay burned for several hours Wednesday afternoon in South Hutch. Fire crews arrived on the scene at Mill Road around noon to find bales of hay engulfed near a large structure holding equipment. The bells were in, pulled away from the structure, spread out, and allowed to burn. Assistant Fire Chief James Miller of District A originally believed that the fire started from overheating inside the bells, but after breaking them apart, they found the insides cool. No damage estimates for the hay were given, and nobody was injured in the blaze. If you are looking for a reason to get out and enjoy this great weather, there are plenty of activities going around in Hutchison this weekend. The fourth annual Downtown Hutchison Rod Run, a classic car show, starts Friday morning with a golf tournament. Then at 6.30 p.m. on Friday, vehicles will cruise Main Street starting at Cary Park going up to Main to 30th. Then loop back around by Lorraine and 11th to Avenue A and Main for a cookout and street dance. So bring out your chairs and watch the fun. There will also be a show and signs on Saturday and Sunday ending with award ceremony Sunday at 2 p.m. More information on the event can be found at HutchRodRun.com. If you like parades, Hutch and Bueller this Saturday, October 1st, for the Bueller Frolic. Activities begin at 7 a.m. with a breakfast and a family fun continues throughout the day. The double parade starts on Main at 11 a.m., followed by a carnival, live entertainment, antique trailer pool, and ending with a ping pong ball drop at 3 p.m. The Family Children's Theater in Hutchison has a powerful performance through Sunday. Orphan Train is a story of nine orphans who were placed on an orphan train leaving New York in 1914. Shows Friday and Saturday start at 7.30 and Sunday's matinee is at 3. Tickets are $10 for adults and 5 for children. So there's no reason to stay at home this weekend. Get out and enjoy the fun activities. So what do you think about doing this weekend? I think I'm going to go street dance. Really? Yeah. What That's what I was thinking. For real? Yeah. I think we should do a little hip hop and jazz, you know. Yes, and you have to throw in the, the country line dance. Like oh, that yeah. Like this has to happen. Yeah, we need to liven up Hutchison a little bit. A little bit, yeah. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> when we come back, Nick is here with a look at sports, and then we'll spotlight on ATC takes a look at one very important person on campus, and we'll find out HCC students' social media habits in this week's Campus Talk. Stay with us.
and welcome back to HCC News for Sports. I'm Nick Wall. Well, the Blue Dragon football team was off this week, but other than that, it was a full slate of competition for HCC's athletic teams. Soccer, volleyball, men's and women's cross country were all in action this week, and the HCC golf team had a successful outing Monday in Salina. The golf squad, led by individual champion Mike Muller, captured first place at this season's second KJCCC league event in Salina. Muller shot a 4-under 136 over, one, over 36 holes and was joined in the top three by fellow Blue Dragons Ben Cotton and shot, and shot a 30 set, 37 and Riley Haas who shot 30, 139. Those three were the only golfers in the field to post par-breaking scores as 8CC won the team title, shooting 556 total strokes and notched a 22-stroke margin over second place Dodge City. The Dragons were 28 strokes better than Johnson County, who finished in third place, and the win was a nice rule reversal of fortunes for the Blue Dragons, who finished third behind Dodge and Johnson in this season's first KJCCC match earlier this month. 8CC will travel to Wichita for the third and final KJCCC League Meet Monday, October 3rd. The event will be held at the Teradyne Country Club. Now turning into the pitch, the Blue Dragons soccer team continued its winning ways with a 9-1 thrashing of Garden City Wednesday at the USD 308 Complex. The Dragons got two goals each from Melissa Hetherington, Ashley Burnett, Shelby Audie, and Nicole Cronin in the win. And as has, has been come commonplace for the head coach Sammy Lane's Blue Dragons, the game was played almost exclusively in the opponent's territory. 8CC outshot Garden by a 30-6 margin. Shots on goal were even more lopsided as 8CC won that battle 14-1. Well, the results weren't so good for the Lady Dragon volleyball team who hosted the 2011 Caribbean Tan Classic September 23rd and 24th at the sports arena. Unfortunately, 8CC went 0-4 for, for the tournament and on day one, the Dragons faced off against number 12 Seminole State College out of Oklahoma. 8CC took that first set 21, 25 to 21, but that mo momentum was thwarted as the uh, Seminoles rebounded by dominating the Blue Dragons 25-13, 25-11, and 25-19 for the four-set win. The second match of the evening saw Hutch take on Jefferson College out of Missouri. Again, 8CC jumped out to an early lead. The Dragons won the first two sets, 25-23 and 25-20, but they couldn't capitalize as Jefferson came back, taking sets three and four with identical 25-20 scores to force the deciding fifth set. Play was back and forth, but HCC came up on the losing end as Jefferson took that set, 15-12, and handed the Lady Dragons their second loss of the evening. Day two of the Classic brought more disappointment. HCC faced number 17 Missouri State West Plains in the early game. West Plains defeated the Lady Dragons in straight sets 25-22, 25-16, and 25-18. Frank Phillips College handed HCC their fourth loss of the weekend after that, taking a four-set win from the Dragons 25-12, 25-22, 23-25, and 25-18. 8CC was able to turn around things uh, in a Monday road match at Heston College. The Dragons did defeat the Larks 25-10, 25-12, and 25-20 in the September 26th contest. Shane Haley and Jordan Ream had nine kills each for the win, and Ream led the team in digs with 13 and was followed closely by Alyssa Riffle, who had 12, and Paige Forrester with 11. Turning to cross country, both the men's and women's squads were in action this past Saturday at the Tabor Invite. The meet included teams and competition from NAIA, NCAA Division II, and junior college levels. The women took third place overall and were led by Maria Fernandez's 11th place finish of 20 minutes 58 seconds on the women's 5-kilometer course. While the men fa failed to finish in the top three as a team, 8CC's Isaac Williams did turn in a fine showing, placing fifth out of a field of 104 runners. Williams crossed the finish line with a time of 27 minutes and 18 seconds on the 8-kilometer course. 
And after a week off to heal any bumps and bruises, the Blue Dragon football team will take its number 11 ranking on the road to Fort Scott Saturday for an afternoon matchup against the Greyhounds. Fort Scott is 2-3 and three on the season. 8CC comes into the October 1 game with a 3-1 and one record. And lastly, with a bit of NBA news, Kobe Bryant said it's very possible he will play in Italy during the NBA lockout. Adding the country is like a second home because he spent much of his childhood there. And also reigning league MVP Derrick Rose said he would strongly also consider playing overseas should the NBA season be completely lost to the lockout. And although the Chicago Bulls point guard is hoping the season will eventually start regardless of how many games might be lost. And that's all for sports this week. Now back over to Elise and Johnny. Thanks, Nick. Wi-Fi security and bandwidth usage are something most students do not think about. But there's a whole crew of staff working to make sure students can log into their ACC email, take online courses, and surf the web with ease. In this week's Spotlight on ACC, we meet Glenn Atchison, Computer Support Manager for the IT Department. Hi, I'm Evan Rothwell with HTC Spotlight here with Glenn Atchison, Technical Support Manager here in the IT department. Glenn, what is your role here at HCC? Why are you so important? <laughs> well, I don't know how important I am, but uh, my role here is I help manage the help desk. And so the, the help desk fields calls from both students, faculty, and staff across campus, and uh, of course our outreach students, distance ed students, and things. Um, and so we help maintain that support level. So if they need help um, logging in, um, browser troubleshooting, um, a host of issues that we, uh, we solve here at the help desk. And that support doesn't come just from here locally on campus, that comes from satellite campuses also spread across the state of Kansas, right? Yeah, yeah. we, we service uh, the satellite campuses. The satellite campuses also have their dedicated support people, um, but uh, we, we're kind of an overflow if, if uh, people are gone or if uh, unavailable for whatever reason. But there's also, uh, you know, we've got students as far away as China, uh, we've got students all across the U.S. Uh, and so we, we field a lot of uh, calls from all over. And here at HCC, how long have you been here on this position, working here in the IT department? I've been in this position since um, 2007, so right at four years. And how much bandwidth does the school have coming in here as far as to, d to give all the students all the YouTube and Facebooking that they can do? We, we currently have two ISPs uh, for a total aggregate bandwidth, so a combined bandwidth of 90 megabits per second. And we're looking at uh, ways to increase that uh, even further as we go forward. And Wi-Fi spread across the campus, you guys have increased security on that, allowing all the new login. And Have you seen any increase in uh, support since that has been implemented? A lot of increase in support. Adding adding security wire security to wireless makes more complicated infrastructure, and it wasn't something we desired to do. Uh, there were some federal regulations that were behind that rollout of, of wireless security, and so yeah, we've had a lot of uh, support increase because of that. But uh, it's kind of stabilized, I think now. And the most popular website you all deal with in terms of bandwidth, Facebook or YouTube? Which one wins? So Facebook wins as far as time spent at the page. YouTube's wins as far as uh, amount of bandwidth used. All right. All right. Uh, totally. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Glenn. And if you have any problems, contact the HCC Support Desk. They're here anytime you need help. This is Glenn Atchison. I'm Evan Rothwell. This is HCC Spotlight. Are you addicted to Facebook? Spend too much time tweeting? Our reporters took to the campus to find out social media habits of ATC students in this week's Campus Talk. I use Twitter more because more people are on it and it's just easier. You know, nobody has to comment on your status or something. They just reply right directly to you. Uh, I use Facebook most of the time and sometimes Twitter. Uh, I use Facebook and I just recently got into Twitter. Twitter and Facebook. Um, I use Facebook and Twitter. Uh, Facebook, I really don't care for Twitter. Uh, I'm just Facebook. That's about it. With the times, Twitter. Uh, I'm not a Twitter guy. <laughs> it's just, I don't understand it. The changes on Facebook, I don't even know. I didn't even know there were changes. Uh, I just no, I use it every day. Yeah. Uh, the changes are really weird, but it doesn't really affect me because I use my phone mostly, so I don't really notice it. 
Uh, I believe I interact a little bit more, but other than that, it hasn't really changed a whole lot. Um, I feel like I haven't really been on it a whole lot lately to notice the change. I don't know. I don't know. What about you? Me personally, I haven't really noticed the changes. Um, people complain about them all the time, but it just doesn't affect me a whole lot. Not a big deal. No, I would not. I think that's a waste of money because not many people are going to be paying for it. No, no, no. no. Why, why would I? I mean, I don't <laughs> think I should. Social networking, why, you know? Usually, I don't, I don't really get on Twitter or Facebook on the computer, so I just wait until I get a notification on my phone. So whenever I get a notification, I'll check it, and then I'm back to work. What'd you say? Uh, I don't really have a whole lot of free time, so I don't really spend a whole lot of time on the computer. Maybe like 30 minutes to an hour, because it'd be like out of all the little increments, you know. It adds up. I'd say about most of my day. I'm not about too much, maybe about half an hour a day. Not too much. So do you guys spend a lot of time on social media sites? I will say that I am addicted to Facebook, and um, that and Twitter just go hand in hand. So. Um, whatever mm -hmm. time I'm not on Facebook, I'm on Twitter tweeting about something. So right, me too. What about you? Uh, Twitter mostly. I mean, I'm a message board uh, fanatic, but okay. I'm not. I mean, I'm, I'm on Facebook every once in a while, but I not not a lot. Twitter is a good way to keep up on a lot of things. So yeah, I have a Twitter too. So if anybody wants to follow me, either one of y'all is <laughs> Retro Elise. Uh, and that's it. All right. I'm Elise Barlow. And I'm Nick Wall. Have a great week. HCC News is a production of the Broadcast and Media Technology Program of Hutchison Community College. For more information on the program or to submit your story ideas, please call 665-3433.